here on the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. And we have for this day our theme, Saved by His Grace, Rising to the Challenge. Jesus continued his ministry even though he had experienced some uh, rejection, most especially from his hometown. But this did not stop Jesus in fulfilling the plans and the purposes of God in his life. The calling that he has in bringing salvation to the world. And as he continues, when these people heard about the many miracles that Jesus did, how that they wanted to hear the Lord Jesus Christ, his teaching, his admonition to the people, because the people began to understand Jesus and even the heart of God, because knowing that this is the promise of God that he would send Savior to the world. And so today's gospel, the Lord would like to remind us that we are called to become partakers of the Lord's work. We become partakers of the Lord's work. God is calling us, his people, into and for his kingdom. There are two things that we need to see concerning God's calling towards us, his people. First, he calls us into his kingdom. That means he saves us. He calls every man to be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. This is God through Jesus Christ calling us to be reconciled. This is God through Jesus Christ saving us. And the second thing that we need to see when God calls us, He calls us to become fruitful for His kingdom. That means the ministry of everyone called into His kingdom is to represent Christ and His church, to be a witness to Him wherever we are, whatever we do, according to the gifts given to us. So this is the ministry to bear, to take their place in the life, worship, and even the governance of the church. So these are the two things that we need to understand when God calls us, when God brings us into His kingdom, He saves us, and he wants us to be useful for his kingdom. Now, when these people came to Jesus to hear him, to listen to him, and because of this great number of people who has that hunger and that thirst to hear and to listen to the Lord Jesus Christ, the story that we have in this gospel, chapter 5, Jesus came to Simon and asked that if he could use his boat and there he could begin to teach the people. Knowing that Peter, Andrew, is already known to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can find in the story in the letter of St. John, St. John chapter 1, how that when John the Baptist, when the Lord Jesus Christ was walking, and as it says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, there it was Andrew who first hears John the Baptist saying, This is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Andrew hears that. You can find that in John 1, 35, so on. And Andrew came to Peter and says, We have found the Messiah of which Moses has spoken. So here's Jesus. He asked Peter, Okay, Peter, now, launch out, go back to the sea and catch for a fish. For Peter, it is a foolish thing to do. Okay? 
Peter was saying to Jesus that for me to go out there and launch the net is impossible. Because Peter knew, Peter understand when is the right time to catch fish. And in doing so, abiding the Lord Jesus Christ, hearing him, for him that is the wrong time to catch fish. Okay? Because Peter is a fisherman. If he only could say to Jesus, Jesus, you're a son of a carpenter. You are good at carpentry. But in catching fish, this is my job. This is my profession. I know when to catch fish. But look at here the challenge that the Lord Jesus Christ brought to Peter. The challenge of his obedience, of his trust. He asked Peter to launch out into the deep of which, for Peter, it is impossible to catch fish. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. So he gives his reason. All night we have done the best that we could do to be able to catch fish. But there was none. We were not able to get even the good quality of fish. I mean, just a few, but they, the scripture says they caught nothing. So they go back washing their nets. But Peter did not stop with that reasoning, with his argument to Jesus. But he says, Nevertheless, at your word, he rises to the challenge not really understanding what he's going to do. For him, it will be a foolish thing to do. But yet, he rises to the challenge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. He responded in faith and in trust. In obedience, even though he knew for himself, in his own understanding, that it is impossible to catch a fish. But he trusts God's word. He trusts the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like Mary, when the angel Gabriel came to her, asked her, that you would be the mother of God. You will bear in your bosom the Savior. Mary says, how could this be? She says, I do not know a man. But the Spirit says to her, the power from on high will overshadow you. That which will be born in you is of the Spirit. And so Mary says to the angel Gabriel, let it be according to your word. And so it happened. Same as what Simon says to Jesus. Lord, at your word, okay, I will obey. I will respond in faith and in trust and in obedience. And so it is that what they have toiled all night, catch nothing, but a single word, Jesus, let down your net, they obey, they were able to get what they wanted. Blessings comes upon obedience, pays to obey God. That is the first challenge that Peter, Andrew, and the rest 
John, James, the son of Zebedee, experienced as they responded in faith. Now in verse 8, when Simon Peter saw, saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at a catch of the fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Jesus says to Simon, From now on, you will catch men. Second challenge that Simon Peter is facing this time is a challenge to follow God's plan for his life. And this also speaks with us. Challenge to follow God's plan and purposes of God in our lives. One of the th first things you should see and understand, God's calling. What does the calling of God do to us is to make us aware of our unworthiness. Why would we begin to see our unworthiness? Because God wanted us to know that our dependence is on Him, not on our own ability, not on our strength, not on who we are or what we are, but what God can do upon each and every one of us. Rising to the challenge. It's not about our status. It's not about our educational attainment. I'm standing here with you this day as a college dropout. I started my ministry at the Christian Life Fellowship Army of the Lord then. Sweeping the floor, cleaning the toilet, that's what I do then. But because of God's grace, God's mercy, He enables. So this is also the challenge that He has to Peter. Don't see yourselves unworthy. See yourself. A calling that I have, the grace that I have for you. In our second reading, you will find that the letter of St. Paul. St. Paul says, it is only by God's grace. So that's why we see our unworthiness because God wanted His grace to be at work in our lives. That our dependence is on Him, the one who gives us the ability through the Holy Spirit who empowers us. That's why we have our motto also in the CEC, the novice dominate. That means not unto us, not unto us, but to your name we give glory. So this is the challenge that uh, Peter, Paul, Peter, Andrew, James and John is experiencing. God the Lord Jesus Christ is calling them to follow Him, a challenge to follow God's plan. Maybe they have their own plans. Maybe they have their own ambitions. But now God, the Lord Jesus Christ is calling them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And so they responded in that calling. Verse 11 says, 
So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. This also speaks to us. Let us not see our weakness, but let us see the strength, the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work upon each and every one of us. This is Jesus assuring us that His grace truly is at work in our lives. But the thing is, first, obedience, trust, faith, then calling us to follow Him, to follow His plans and His purposes. These two things is God calling us. Two things that we need to do and to rise above in our lives. Challenge of obedience and to follow Him. So stand, let us again profess our faith.